Am I evil? Worse, you're smart. When you know nothing matters, the universe is yours. And I've never met a universe that was into it. The universe is basically an animal. It grazes on the ordinary. Creates infinite idiots just to eat them. Not unlike your friend Timmy. Tommy. Yeah, hardly matters now, sweetie. Do you want Rick Sanchez to be your grandfather? On the one hand, he'll take you on a 20-minute adventure, unless he prefers another grandchild to you. On the other hand, he is obviously far from being the most lovable person. What's wrong with him? And does Rick have any feelings? Let's find out. If you like our psychological breakdowns of the characters from different movies and TV series, subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. Everybody f*** off. Morty, I need your help. We, 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 we need to go on a quick adventure. You said I could go to school today. That was before I needed something, Morty. There's a plasma shard in the Abadongo cluster. A princess has it. If I get it, I'll be awesome. We've been going non-stop, Rick. It's not healthy. You know, these are my teenage years. I, I just found out Jessica's single. Oh, that's... Wow, Morty. Wow. What an exciting life you lead. Let's go. In and out. 20 minutes adventure. Rick gives the impression that he is simultaneously insane and shrewd. He's a skeptic, cynic, and pessimist who's mastered sarcasm skills and hates everything. The series begins with Rick returning to his daughter Beth after years of living alone and settles in her house side by side with a loser son-in-law and two grandchildren, Summer and Morty. Without any ado, Rick sets his rules and proclaims himself the head of the family. Beth accepts this new boss as she doesn't want her father to leave again. I, I should be making you breakfast for putting up with me. You should be making us a whole restaurant. Nonsense. We couldn't be happier to have you around. I just wish I got to see more of Rick you. Rick is not the type who loves spending time with his family, so the characters gather together only for a morning or evening meal. The rest of the time he hangs out in the garage working on different devices. The only family member Rick's interested in is his grandson, Morty. But does he really matter to his granddad? Does Rick feel affection for anyone? I appreciate you, Morty. Okay, cool. All right, ready? No. You little son of a bitch! Are you, doing, Rick? Y y are you a simulation? Stop. Huh? Stop. Are you oh a simulation? God. No! No! no. You little son of a bitch! <gasps> I'm, I'm sorry, Morty. You're, you're a good, you're a good kid, Morty. Jeez! You're, you're a good, you're a good kid. Oh my God! At the beginning of the series, Morty is an insecure schoolboy, practically invisible to his peers. His granddad is the only one who makes him feel special because Morty is not just his grandson, but a junior partner. No adventure can happen without him. He's literally irreplaceable, even though he often complains and whines. Well, that's what Rick says. Morty likes the attention his grandchild pays to him. All their adventures turn Morty into a brave and independent boy. In the last season, we see that he becomes more detached from Rick. Despite this, Rick believes that Morty is going to stay by his side forever. He is the only person who makes Rick show some feelings. But it all happens for a reason. Those who have to deal with Rick Sanchez seek his praise and respect, from his grandchildren who argue whom he loves more, to the entire planet. If you have to communicate with the likes of Rick and feel like Morty 24-7, check out our course, Get to Know Yourself. Find some tips to boost your self-esteem. The link to the course is in the bio. Rick is unsentimental and no one expects him to be upfront about his feelings. In fact, he openly claimed that he doesn't believe in love. Listen, Morty, I hate to break it to you, but what people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. It hits hard, Morty, then it slowly fades, leaving you stranded in a failing marriage. I did it. Your parents are going to do it. Break the cycle, Morty. Rise above. Focus on science. Considering that Rick doesn't demonstrate any affection towards people, it's obvious why he feels free to manipulate them. By changing Morty's memories, he violates his grandson's personal boundaries, as if he takes his grandson for an object and not a human being. Without any second thought, Rick has cloned his daughter and doesn't bother which Beth is real. The main thing is that the clone performs her functions. We may presume that he made a copy of his daughter because he cares about her. Well, this is slightly possible. It's hard to believe that the very fact of cloning your child may be a sign of love. Why would you make a clone of me just to send the clone into space? Well, you didn't want to go, and I thought, okay, that's cool. But then I thought, well, you, you know what would be even cooler is a space daughter? S so I made one, and I put a bomb in her neck in case she ever came back. Father of the year! She wasn't supposed to come back! Why did she? Well, she found a bomb in her neck, wouldn't you? It turns out that Morty is not the only Morty in the multiverse, which makes Rick upset, but not for long. 
He responds sarcastically that there are no irreplaceable Mortys. This is actually Rick's philosophy of life. When he can't have or fix something, he moves to another universe. Wonderful things, Morty. Just you and me, Morty. The outside world is our enemy, Morty. We're the only <coughs> friends we've got, Morty. It's just Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty and their adventures, Morty. Rick and Morty forever and forever, 100 years, Rick and Morty some things. Me and Rick and Morty and running around and Rick and Morty time. All day long, forever, all 100 days. When puberty hits Morty, Rick replaces him with Summer. This only means that Rick lacks empathy and has a low level of emotional intelligence. We also see that Rick thinks first about himself and uses others to achieve his goals. I did a pretty good job back there for a human cloaking device. Saved your ass. All right, Morty, don't break an arm jerking yourself off. Man, I can't believe you, Rick. That right there, that, that was a great opportunity to show a little humanity, you know? To connect with me a little. Hey, Morty, you want connection? Go be part of some stupid club like all those dumb Ricks. You know, maybe I don't connect because I'm the Rickest Rick there is. And you know, it would go, uh, go without saying that the Rickest Rick would have the Mortiest Morty. Even though there is an infinite number of Ricks in the universe, our Rick believes he's the Rickest of all. And this version agrees with him. Rick is a brilliant scientist. He knows that he's unique and doesn't miss a chance to mention it and humiliate others. The president, other scientists, even other Ricks are good for nothings. But what happens if someone doubts Rick's greatness? He'll try to prove them wrong. His close people know this well enough to never put themselves in this position. Although once Morty manipulated his granddad to invent a device he needed, Rick was very reluctant until Morty expressed doubts about Rick's abilities and got his way. Rick made the device. What does this say about Rick? He is a manipulative and unsympathetic narcissist. He doesn't value an emotional connection, considers himself an outstanding person, and needs others to appreciate him in the same way. He does everything to make this happen, demanding admiration and shooting down any other point of view. Personality is a complex structure. It consists of innate features of our nervous system as well as the features we acquire growing up, being under the influence of environment and upbringing. These factors are responsible for the formation of personality, which can be either normal or pathological. For example, if someone has a weak nervous system and they have been systematically abused, there's every likelihood that their personality will develop pathologies. There are, however, two types of personality without pathological implications norm and accentuation. When a person has a normal personality, they don't take their emotions to extremes and find it easy to adapt to a new environment. As far as accentuation is concerned, people have impaired adaptability and some of their traits conspicuously manifest themselves in stressful situations. Also, pathologies include chronic personality disorders, which amount to about 10 or so. Rick struggles with one of them, namely narcissistic personality disorder, which is characterized by a pattern of grandiosity, need for admiration, and lack of empathy. <laughs> Look at this, Morty. Look at my fucking hand. Look at this shit. Why do you keep doing this to us? I don't know, Morty. Maybe I hate myself. Maybe I think I deserve to die. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> the classic feature of narcissists is their unstable, ambivalent self-esteem. Rick never shows his weaknesses in front of others. Like a typical narcissist, Rick does his best to ignore shame and fear. These feelings are considered to be the signs of weakness, so he deems he has to avoid them. You're crying over a Morty? No, I'm just allergic to dipshits. The duality of a narcissist's self-esteem means that it goes from I am the best to I am worthless several times within a short period of time. But even during these mood swings, narcissists hide their insecurity from other people. When alone, they indulge into apathy and self-condemnation. All this is true of Rick. Hey Rick, you know this whole time, I haven't once heard you say that wubble up a dub dub thing that you usually say? Don't need to. I have a, <coughs> a new catchphrase. Oh yeah? W what's that, Rick? I love my grandkids. Aww. Psych, just kidding. My new catchphrase is, I don't give a fuck! There is no information about Rick's past and his relationship with his parents. Yet there is a certain type of upbringing that encourages narcissism. Children are always evaluated compared to others, and supposed to look up to other people. 
They are noticed and praised only when they manage to please their parents. No one cares what these children really long for. If a mother wants her child to become a scientist, she would insistently direct that child's attention to the sciences overlooking their natural talents. Since any child wants to be praised and cared for, such parental behavior makes them create a false self that helps them get what they want from their parents. However, they doubt themselves and absorb an idea that they are flawed. This never-ending cycle of evaluation and comparison triggers the feelings of inferiority that never leaves the narcissist alone. Now, we can imagine what kind of upbringing Rick had and how his narcissism was formed. Let me out, what you see is not the same person as me, my life's a lie, I'm not who you're looking at. Let me out, set me free, I'm really old, this isn't me, my real body's slowly dying in a vat. Obviously, he has to be confident and decisive, dealing with the universe. But envy and emptiness shouldn't be the driving force. Rick suffers because he lacks close or like-minded people and often notices that even his family use him. He fills the void inside with alcohol, which makes him experience euphoria and a false sense of the absence of intrapersonal issues. What's your take on Rick Sanchez? Would you go on a 20-minute adventure with him? Share your thoughts in the comments. Rick is a great scientist and a weirdo. People like him rarely like other people. If you don't want to fall into the trap of their look-down attitude, you'd better spot a narcissist a mile off. Our course, Get to Know Yourself, can help you with this. The link is in the description box. Art for Introvert is not just a YouTube channel. It is an educational project that covers a lot of different topics. If you like our videos, check out our courses. See the link in the description box.